Okay, hi everyone. So today is our final recitation and we're gonna do a final exam review. So what we're going to do is gonna go over the final exam overview, the date and day and location. Then we're gonna go through the material quickly. And uh, then we're gonna go through the final exam format. And then I'm gonna give you some tips based on midterm grading and also based uh, as a student, last year student of this class. Um, so the final exam will be next Monday, May 9th, uh, from 3.30 to 6.30 in Knox 104. And please uh, double check uh, the daytime location and my help. So as of the material, uh, the final exam is cumulative. That means everything is covered in the final exam. Uh, whether it's lectures, topics, or the assignments. Um, so let's go through some of the topics and some basic ideas uh, from the lectures. So the first part is the midterm topics, which is uh, the process abstraction. So you should know all about the process. Yes? Sorry? Yes. Um, so you should know all about the process of abstraction and uh, why do we provide abstraction. Um, so we know that by abstraction, we just like um, separate policy from mechanism. You, know, you should know what is a policy, what is a mechanism, and uh, why do we provide uh, abstraction to just like provide the new capabilities, hide undesirable uh, properties, and also organize on formation. Uh, you should also know that the a thread abstracts a CPU state, uh, a file abstract a disk, and address space abstract uh, the memory. Also, you should be familiar with the process model that we presented in the recitation. You should know what a process consists of, threads, address space, file tables, how the file abstraction, the three levels that we mentioned, um, uh, is organized and file syscalls, uh, process syscalls from assignment two. Uh, so mostly the conceptual part of the assignment. So you're not going to be asked about uh, assignments implementation. Um, but you should have a general idea of uh, how the conceptual part of the assignment goes and how did you implement them because later on maybe you've been asked about data structures, comparing data structures. Um, then we'll move into the synchronization. So synchronization is basically assignment one. So you should know why uh, we need synchronization. Uh, you should ha have an idea what is a critical section. Uh, why do we need to protect uh, shared resources? and what are the synchronization primitives. So you've implemented four of them, logs, semaphores, um, condition variables, and read or write logs. Um, familiarize yourself with other synchronization primitives, how they work, and also you should be also familiar with deadlocks, race condition, and starvation. What are the differences? How should we avoid them in several scenarios? Uh, and next, we have the interrupt handling. So when an interrupt happens, how do we handle an interrupt? Or before that, what are the interrupt types? We have several types of interrupts. So we have software interrupt, like syscall. We have hardware interrupt, keyboard input. We have uh, software exception, divide by zero. We also have timer interrupt. Uh, those are used with the context switching for uh, just like uh, enforcing uh, scheduling quantum, for example. Uh, and then the context switch. Why do we need context switch? Uh, scheduling, what are the algorithms that uh, we presented in class for scheduling, like RSDL, uh, uh, round robin, and uh, you should be able to just like compare them, or let's say, as what we had in the midterm, implement a new, just like capabilities for these, uh, improve these uh, algorithms. And then we have the memory management. So 
the memory management basically physical memory and versus virtual memory you should be able to know how we should handle physical memory so we know that um, so just like we talked about the core map and for, uh, and for the physical memory what are the limitations for physical memory versus virtual memory and also then we move into the virtual memory we have the address space virtual addresses how the virtual memory is being managed um, how do we physical we translate physical to virtual addresses and vice versa how does the TLB ma work why do we need a TLB uh, and then paging uh, we have the page table uh, several algo several data structures we presented for implementing the page table uh, so this is basically the midterm topics and then we move on to the post midterm topics which is the remaining topics that are discussed in the class for example continuing the memory management uh, we discussed the swapping so you should have an idea uh, how does the swap uh, function why do we need the swapping uh, and um, what are the several algorithms to just like choose the page that should be swapped so maybe you, you're being going to be asked for example implement or describe an algorithm that uh, a new algorithm let's say uh, that decides which page should be just like swapped out uh, then we move into disks so you should know the different type of disk HDD, SSD, uh, pros and cons for those uh, differences and also what are the parts of a uh, disk uh, this is important uh, what for example what does you should have a brief idea what does each part is uh, responsible for uh, then we move into files so you should be able to define a file what is a file what do we expect from a file uh, for example, should be reliable, should retrieve the data that are stored in it, uh, <coughs> and the structure of a file. How should we uh, save the meta information of the file? The inf uh, uh, in the lectures, we presented several ways to where should, for example, we save the meta data of the file. And then file systems. Uh, so we have. <coughs> different file system for example what is a file system first of all what are the expectation of file system so managing files organizing files um, what else we have also what are the goals of uh, file systems when we for example have several file systems uh, based on what these file systems are being created for example one maybe prefers performance while the other prefers uh, consistency um, what are the data structures that are used in file systems? Uh, flat, uh, for example, or uh, flat array or linked list. We're, there are several uh, data structures that are presented in the lectures. Uh, caching and consistency. So how should we provide caching while maintaining consistency? You should have an idea of this. Um, for consistency we've just like uh, caching consistency consistency we've discussed several topics like journaling and FFS log structured file systems and how do they uh, handle uh, these capabilities um, so this is basically for the post midterm topics then comes the paper part that uh, were presented so we have several papers RAID Full virtualization, I believe virtu full virtualization is a lecture, but Zen and Art of Virtualization is a paper. Plantis, uh, so we have exokernel uh, browser versus microkernel uh, browser. Performance and benchmarking, uh, so we have different, how should we compare systems and what are the different types of benchmarking, micro, macro benchmarking, so you should know and have an idea of all of these and you should be able to compare them hence for computer system design uh, this is important so make sure to know s just like a set of these at least you should be able to define them talk about them compare them and just like provide uh, examples for these um, 
then we have scaling Linux to many cores, and the last paper, which is a virtual mobile smartphone. Um, so for the papers, your uh, what is covered in the final is whatever discussed in the lectures. Uh, maybe the slice doesn't cover everything, so you need, for example, to get a better idea of what are the concepts of these papers. You need to read or go through the papers. But uh, uh, what you're required for is whatever is discussed in the lecture. So, yes? So, I'm going to discuss this uh, based on the question. So, for example, for RAID, you should be able to define what is RAID, what are the different types of RAID, compare these different types. You should be able to just like be able to compare these, RAID 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Um, uh, as I said, for the hands, know some of the hands, keep those in mind, and uh, make sure that you are able to define them, describe them, give an example, and compare them maybe. Uh, so this is basically for the final exam material. Uh, any questions on this part? OK. So now let's go to the uh, final exam format. So uh, the final exam is out of 100 points, divided as follows. First, you're going to have 10 multiple choice questions, the same as similar to the midterm. So each one is worth one point. And those are directly uh, drawn from the second half of the lecture. This information is based on the last year final exam. Uh, most likely it should be correct, uh, but still be ready. Uh, so, and this is also given in the, uh, so if you go through the first page of the final exam last year, you will see all this information mentioned over there. So it's that it's uh, so the ten multiple uh, choice questions are drawn directly from the second half of the lecture slides. Then you're gonna have so you're required to answer all ten of them. Then you're gonna have six short answer questions. You're required to answer four or more, and we're gonna just like give you credit for the best four answers. So four by five is gonna be twenty points uh, for the short answer. These are similar to the midterm short answer. And these are mostly uh, drawn from the second half. So that means it might be, you might get some questions from the first half in the short answer questions. Uh, some, uh, some students missed that point on the exam that you're supposed to answer these questions in four or five sentence. Some students even did it in two and they get the full grade. So. But unfortunately, several students just like they answered it in a full page. And that's why they get good points out of the 20. But when it comes to the long answer, they just like didn't answer anything. So they just like spent the whole time on the uh, short answer. So the answers to these are supposed to be four to five. So please be direct to the point and yes. Yes. Uh, so make sure you read this instruction and follow them. It will save you time and it will maximize the number of points that you get. So this is for the uh, short answer questions. Then you're going to have one medium answer question. Uh, this is similar or equivalent to the long an midterm long answer. So it's going to be out of uh, 20 points and it's drawn from the second half material. Your answer to the medium answer should be page or a two page, similar to the midterm. And finally, you're going to have two long answer questions. You're required to answer both of them, uh, each 25 points, so total 50 points. And so this is integrate material from the entire semester. That means first and second. And uh, most likely, you need to use your knowledge also to link whatever you're being asked to your knowledge and answer them. This is why even if we release them, that doesn't mean you're going to get the right answer. So uh, make sure you really understand the, all the topics conceptually. Don't memorize, understand. And this will help you answer this uh, type of questions. Uh, answer to these questions should just like 
goes to takes or just like uh, several pages. Um, so this is the final exam format. Any questions on these? Okay. So let's go through some tips. Um, please answer clearly. Uh, make if drawing figures, providing diagrams help, provide them. That's fine. But make sure that when a grader reads your answer, it will get it from the first or second time. Not just like trying, spending half an hour trying to, OK, he might be talking about this or that. So make sure your answer is clear. Uh, be concise. Just uh, go to the point and I mean, don't go just like providing some unrelated uh, answers. Uh, read the question several times. Make sure you understand what is being asked. So, and also be, or, be organized. So as you can see from the long answer on the midterm, the, uh, the, the questions were divided into parts. So make sure to use bullets for these parts uh, so that it would be clear, for example, where are the new, for example, for the scheduling question, the new two uh, decisions, uh, two new trade-offs, so if you use bullets, it will be clear, and you will get the most out of the points for that uh, questions, for these questions. So for medium and long answer questions, uh, so I'm providing here an example from the midterm and some of the common uh, mistakes that the students made. So for example, in the second, uh, I think the second long answer, uh, long answer questions, which ask you to provide uh, new decisions for scheduling algorithm. So if you can see, it tells you first, describe how these capabilities complicate the original scheduling problem, identify two new decisions that need to be made. Many students fall into that mistake where they just like, let's say they wrote two pages answer for such question, one, one page, a total of one page went only for describing how these capabilities complicate the original scheduling algorithm. And the second page was just like answering the questions, which is the 20 points. Uh, where if you read and if you check uh, how many points is allocated for each part of the question, you would know that you need one page for identifying, dis briefly describing the scheduling problem and then providing uh, two new decisions and two new trade-offs. This is one page because it's a 10 point worth. And then you need one, on one page, one full page for the describing the scheduling algorithm itself. And this is 10 points. So relate how much you need to write to how many points is given for this question. So make sure you write the most for the part that has the most number of points allocated to it. Uh, so this is one of the things. So know what is being asked and also link to your knowledge. Um, and also use the questions. So for example, um, in the scheduling, we've mentioned the number of cores and the cores frequency. So some students, for example, they didn't use those capabilities and they just like discussed another other capabilities other than the number of cores and um, uh, the cores uh, frequency. So I might be able as a grader to give you some partial points for this, but you're going to lose a significant number of points if you don't relate your answer to the question. Uh, so use the question uh, ideas to answer in your answer and also identify what is being asked divide them based on the number of points. If the number of points are provided to you, use them. They are not provided to you just like for us to grade. No, it's also for you to just like decide how many time you need to allocate for such a question. Um, some other few uh, notes. So for the uh, short answer questions, there are some questions that you really should be just like, um, should be able to answer them. 
And may, so they are repeated in several exams. For example, as a student last year, the uh, page table uh, question and the short answer. If, so this was provided last year in the midterm and in the final. And it was provided in the midterm and might be provided again into the final. But for example, in the midterm, only half of the students answered this question, while many of you should have answered because it's really easy. So, you, so make sure, for example, questions like the page tables, two-level page table, should be able to answer such a question. Um, also, uh, disk, diagram, disk diagram, make sure you really familiarize yourself with this. This is one of the questions that if came, you shouldn't lose points on such a question. Uh, so you might be given, as you saw in our uh, last year final, you might be given the disk diagram, and you'll be asked for several parts of uh, the disk. And maybe just like basic, uh, provide basic functionality of each part. Uh, so these are the two questions that you really need to familiarize yourself with. Um, hence the paper, hence from system design. This is also one of the things that don't miss it out. If you're gonna, for example, you don't have time and you're gonna miss some part of the uh, material, don't miss that one. Uh, make sure you know some of the hints uh, and just like practice on providing examples, defining them, comparing them. Um, what else? Uh, system calls. Uh, yeah, so this is basically uh, what I have for the final exam. Any questions? So which of the uh, papers did you take on the desk? Yeah, for example, uh, hence from computer system design. I mean, this, if you get any question on this, you shouldn't miss the points on that. Uh, RAID, uh, but yeah, again. As a TA, I should tell you, go through all of them. I really don't know what's going to come in the exams. But uh, from my, uh, so whatever I told you is based uh, on my experience as a student last year and as a TA grading the midterm this year. So yeah, this is basically what I have for today. So any other questions on the final exam? Yes. Oh, OK. So for example, the multiple choice census is directly drawn from the second half. You might get some question in the multiple choice. Uh, short answer, uh, especially when you are going to, for example, compare, let's say, what kind of raid does this and this and this. And for example, you need to just like f pick up one. Or, so make sure you just like understand what our concepts with that were presented in the class. Have a general idea. Uh, and as I said, maybe the slides doesn't cover everything. So you need to refer to the paper itself to get the general ideas of uh, these papers. Uh, so yeah, any other questions? No, no, no. For the medium, you're going to have only one medium, and you're going to need to answer that one. The same goes with the long answer. Two questions, you're required to answer both of them. There's the only option you're given is with the short answer questions. You're going to give them six, and you need to answer four. Yes? Well, for me, the, the, what I can advise you to do is just like understand, don't memorize. This is the major thing. Because if you don't understand, you're not going to be able to answer them. Why? Because you need to relate these concepts to just, a, just like general knowledge. So yeah, this is the main thing you need to do. Uh, but yeah, if you have time, go through the slides. Uh, 
recitation. It will just like review the assignments in general through the recitation uh, slides, uh, papers, general idea, and then allocate some time reviewing the previous exams. Yeah. So this is how you should go about it, I believe. Understanding is the major thing that you need to concentrate on. Concentrate on. Yes. So, any other questions? Yes. So you really don't know what, for example, he asked if we're going to have, for example, the paper question is going to come as a multiple choice or long answer. So I really can't tell you in which part piece you should concentrate because you need to just like understand all the ideas presented in the lectures and then you should be able to just like answer whether it is a multiple choice uh, question or long answer. But I can't really tell you which part I did really focus on. Uh, yeah, I can, you really can't focus on one part because you really don't know what you're going to get in the final exam, right? Especially for the long answers. But you should be able to be ready to the level that you are able to answer some of the long answer uh, questions that, for example, if you want to test yourself, go to the previous exams, try to answer one of the long answer, medium answer, see how do you do on these. Yes. Any other questions? OK. Thanks for coming throughout the semester. Good luck with third checkpoint and the final exam. Thank you.